Hey guys, welcome back to 1776 or Bust. So today we're gonna do a little comparison here on three Glock type firearms. Now with all, of course, truthfulness here, I don't own any more Glocks. At this point, I really believe that Glocks are good guns. I don't see any problem with people who wanna own them, but there are so many good options out there that are Glock-like, that come with better options, maybe a better system. Although some would argue the reliability may not be where it should be. I have to tell you that I have not found that. For example, my favorite Glock type gun is the MR920 from Shadow Systems. This gun, by all stretch of the imagination, is fantastic. It's got a good trigger, good sights out of the box. It's optic capable with a, an amazing sight system regarding how you're absolutely able to, to sink this so low into the slide the way uh, due to the way it, it actually mounts. So as a complete package, I think, I think the MR920 absolutely destroys Glock in so many different ways. Now, of course, uh, one of the other guns that I do have that is very Glock-like is, of course, the Zev. This is the OZ-9C. Again, a very, very nice firearm by its own right. Uh, some might complain that the reliability may not be what a Glock is, but nonetheless, it's still a very good handgun, and it is still based off of a Glock platform. The final one that I have here, <coughs> excuse me, is of course the one I just reviewed, and this is the Bull Armory. This is the, the Axe C Cleaver, or the Axe Cleaver C, which is basically a Glock 19 size firearm and has some pretty cool features that, in my opinion, again, just outdo Glock. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick comparison, maybe not so quick, but a comparison between all three of these firearms that are based off the Glock, the Glock platform and which one of these firearms I think is the best in certain categories. Now, I will tell you, there is not one of these three guns that win every single category. Category, at least not in my opinion. Uh, based on what I'm looking at and how I'm going to address this, each gun is going to have its own qualities and really its own category of greatness, I guess you could say, based on the three. So the first thing we're going to look at is basically from top to bottom, we're going to look at the slides. Okay. So obviously the Cleaver C, the slide is a very interesting looking slide, as you guys can see. It is again, um, a very nice looking slide from all of its, you know, the way it's cut and everything else. Now, when I talk about the slide, I'm going to talk about some of the features of the slide. And what I'm really looking at, and let me just pull this off, is we're gonna talk a little bit about the serrations. Now, obviously every gun has some form of serrations. Uh, some of them are more usable than others. Some of them are kind of, uh, you know, not cut out so deep. And then others are gonna be, you know, for the most part, fairly aggressive. Now, all three of these have kind of unique looks to them. When I look at all the serrations, for example, the MR920, I would say this is kind of the more traditional looking, as is the Zev, which I'll put over here. And uh, one of the things that I would say is that if I was gonna look at all of these combined, you know, I would say just based on the Zev versus the MR920, Honestly, I think the MR920, while it does a decent job of the serrations on the slide, on the front and the back, I think the Zev actually outclasses it a little bit. The Zev slide seems to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, the serrations are a little bit deeper. Now, keep in mind, you can get different types of slides from Zev. Um, again, I forget what this one is called. And while the serrations don't necessarily look that deep, they are pretty sharp and they do have a lot of tactileness. I think that's a word, uh, compared to the MR920. The MR920 seems to run a little bit shy regarding the depth of the cuts and just how rigid those cuts are with the serrations. Now, of course, if I bring up this little guy, which is the Bull Armory, this one's a little bit different. It is obviously not a traditional looking slide regarding the cuts. However, one of the things that I was very surprised about is while they are not necessarily traditional serrations, either vertical or kind of slanted, the way they cut these out on this particular slide, the grooves and just where basically these, these little nubs are, it makes the slide extremely usable for any type of either press checking or you know running the slide to put it in the battery. I mean, the slide cuts on this, in my opinion, this is the winner of the three. So if I was gonna rank them, number one is gonna be the Bull Armory, number two is definitely gonna be the Zev, and number three, unfortunately, is the MR920, which, by the way, I have a little bit of a bias with the MR920 because that's actually my favorite of the three. Uh, I have a lot of time with it, probably around 7,000 rounds through it, and I love the gun, extremely functional, never had one hiccup. So it is kind of disturbing that I'm not going with that gun, but again, I do believe the Bull Armory slide is just very unique in the way it looks like get like I said in the video it looks almost like um, almost like teeth like a snake fang or something like that but it does a great job uh, definitely I think the serrations are the best on this one 
Now, of course, the next thing we're going to talk about are the options on the slide. Now, right off the bat, the box, what I'm going to tell you is that this one's going to be the loser. This is going to be the axe, uh, the cleaver. And the only reason why is because this is pretty limited regarding the actual options of the slide. It is not optic cut, as you can see right here. Uh, it doesn't come with a high vis front sight at all, and it's not a blacked out rear. So it's a three white dot setup, even though they're steel. Um, I definitely don't think it's the best of the three, but I also don't think it's the worst of the three, and I'll explain why. One of the things you're going to have to realize with Zev is that I built this guy from scratch. So in other words, it didn't come from the factory. It was basically me designing what I wanted out of a gun. And this is what I came up with. And I've been pretty satisfied. I shot it the other day. It shot really well. Um, had a couple of blips here and there. But again, I do believe it had something to do with this, uh, which I hit on with the Bull Armory. But one of the things that I have to say is that this one actually, I think, finishes last only for one reason and one reason alone. Because of the fact it doesn't come with any sights. You actually have to buy the sights. Now, the gun is expensive whether you buy it from the factory it does come with sites decent sites that is but if you decide to build one like I did you know if you have an extra spare of Glock sites you can use them but again it, it's kind of the downfall of putting one together so take that for what it's worth but I do believe that the site picture on this is good now I do have some Ameriglose on here but at the same time it didn't come with sites so that's kind of a downer so that's why I'd say this one would fail regarding site picture or sites as a whole even though it is optic ready now, the winner, in my opinion, is going to definitely be the MR920. And the reason why I say that is because out of the box, this thing has everything you need. It's got a high-vis front night sight. It's got a blacked out rear. Also, obviously, as you can tell, it is optic capable with, in my opinion, the best setup for that. And I have to tell you guys that I've shot a lot of rounds through this gun. And so far, everything's been perfect. I haven't had any movement with the, the dot. I haven't had any issues with the sight at all. So in my opinion, of all three, even though the Zev has an optic capable slide, the fact that there are no sights that come with the, with that particular slide when I bought it, in my opinion, makes it finish a little bit behind Bull Armory, even though the Bull Armory gun doesn't have the optic capability on this particular model. Now the winner again, like I said, definitely the MR920 because it has everything you want. It's got coat witnessing sights. It is a high vis front and obviously the optic capability. So the MR920 takes that one. Now let's talk about ergonomics. So obviously ergonomics is gonna be different for everybody. So for example, you might have no problem handling a Glock. Now obviously we all know Glocks tend to be very blocky. Some people don't like the way the angle of the grip is. I don't particularly mind it. I actually don't have any issues with it. But again, the ergonomic pattern of the Glock isn't necessarily the most user friendly. So of course, when I looked at all three of these handguns, I'm gonna tell you straight up, the one that I didn't like the most, even though it's not that bad, is the Zev. And the reason why I'm saying I didn't like the Zev as much is because the Zev really retains a lot of the characteristics of a Glock lower. It is a little bit thicker uh, in the grip, uh, even though it does have kind of this interesting little like cut in right here on both sides. You just feel like this feels more like a traditional Glock. So it's a bit thicker in the hand. Um, the beaver tail in the back, I don't think is very contoured. So as a result, it is pretty thick. So if you have smaller hands, um, what's gonna probably happen is you're gonna hit that thumb knuckle as you're shooting. So that's one of the reasons why this to me while it is an ergonomically decent gun finishes last amongst the other two now which one am i going to pick it's hard to tell guys i'm going to be honest with you but i have to say for me now that i'm holding both in both hands to me the winner is going to be the MR920. And the reason why I'm saying that is because you have the opportunity to kind of change the backstrap on this gun. So it just gives you a little bit more uh, adjustability for your own particular grip or your hand. Uh, I do like the way the beaver tail is kind of cut in um, or contoured right in this area here. Hopefully you guys can see that. But you can see it is contoured a little bit more than, let's say, the Zev, which is, you know, basically extends all the way out. So this gives you a little bit more uh, playroom with the back knuckles there. But it also feels pretty good in the hand. And you don't have to worry about slide bite because it, it just fits in your hand really nicely. The grip is also very rounded, comparatively speaking, to a Glock. So you don't necessarily have those that blocky feel to it. It actually feels very comfortable in the hand. And the grip is just enough to get a good solid grip with it, but also having room for your support hand. 
The other thing I would say about the ergonomics of this pistol that are a little bit different from the other two is they just have this slight cutout or this shelf right here. Now this shelf you can use obviously as a gas pedal, but it isn't too extreme so it doesn't just stick out completely, but it's just enough to be able to get a good bite on it. And because of that texturing that's there, your thumb sits there nicely. It doesn't really move. Now, when we talk about the ergonomics of, let's say, the axe, this one is definitely second place, but it is a very, very, very close second. Um, I believe that this is a very ergonomic pistol, feels very nice, but I'd say one of the biggest downsides is, even though the, the texturing on the grip is very functional, I definitely have to say it's not as comfortable as, let's say, the MR920. Uh, it does kind of stick into your hands as opposed to kind of adding friction. So while it doesn't hurt, I mean, you're not gonna cry about it, at the same time, I would say it definitely has a little bit of a disadvantage, but it's not not by much and that's the only thing I would say about it now in regards to the shape of the grip the grip is fantastic again very very similar to the MR920 because it is rounded um, however it just seems like it's a little thicker in the beaver tail as a matter of fact you can see that right there while they did put in a nice little contour on the back of this beaver tail the problem is is that it's still not cut in I think deep enough so what happens is a lot of times as you grip that gun if you have a smaller you know radius I guess of your hand you're probably going to hit the, the knuckle now is it as bad as the Zev it's not even close it's just not as good as the MR920 but it's still pretty decent now obviously um, when we talk about another part of the lower we've got to talk about the trigger so of all three guns and this is what, where I just can't believe I'm going to say this of all three guns the one trigger that I feel is not the best now I just want to say this one thing it is a million times better than a Glock trigger out of the box but it's still not the best of the others I would say the worst of the three triggers in regards to its smoothness um, the take up on the trigger the way the trigger you know kind of feels I would say it's actually the MR920 like the MR920 has a good trigger on it but it's not that great like for some reason one one of the things I've always said about it is that there is a pretty good amount of take up and there is a lot of creep in it and it's like a grindy creep. Now I got thousands of rounds through this gun and it's still there. So, you know, unfortunately out of all the guns, to me, this one does not have the best feel of the trigger. Now, it doesn't mean the trigger won't work. No, this is a great trigger. It's a great gun. It's easy to shoot. You're going to enjoy it if you have one, uh, obviously. And if you don't, you should go get one because, again, this is probably a, the best of all of them. But at the same time, still some things that they can improve. So the Zev gun, the OZ-9, the take up is very smooth. And you get to about there and slight more creep. And you can actually hear the springs. And then you have a decent break. Now, the reset on the Zev... It's pretty short, it is pretty forceful, so it does push your finger up a little bit, but it's actually a very nice trigger. I, I have to say, it is much better than the AMR920. Now, the only thing I would add to this is that when you look at the bull armory trigger, here you've got your take up, a little bit of creep, and then a very nice short break. So of the three triggers, this one has the least amount of creep, it breaks very nicely. Now the reset on this, it's very short, a little bit more forceful than the MR920, but not as forceful as the Zev. But what a trigger. I have to give it to the Bull Armory. The trigger on this gun is just, in my opinion, superior to the other two. It is very close to the Zev, but I just think it just has a little bit more of an edge to it than, let's say, the Zev trigger. But it definitely feels a little bit better than the MR920, in my opinion. So that covers the serrations, that covers the, the options of the slide, it covers the trigger, covers the ergonomics, and even kind of covers the texturing. Now, one of the things that somebody wanted to see was, or asked was, is this kind of a, a thumb rest for your thumb? I'm going to tell you that it is. However, one of the things that I would say where it's just not as good as, let's say, the MR920 is it just doesn't give you enough of a ledge there. You know, uh, while it does have a good texturing, it, I just wish they would have had a little bit more of an edge or at least covering this up a little bit more. Because one of the things I noticed when I was shooting, and I'm fairly certain again that it, this is what it causes as I was running my thumb, my thumb get pushing down on the uh, the slide release or, or the uh, takedown lever. And because of that, I was having, uh, I had like four or five, I can't remember, four or five different uh, issues with it going back into battery. So unfortunately, that's what I, what I think it is. Again, I will be testing this gun out again in about two weeks, a week and a half. And of course, I'll report that to you. But I mean, overall, 
it's not bad. It's just not as good as the MR920s. And unfortunately, the one that I hate the most is gonna be the Zev because there really is nothing there. Yeah, there's texturing, but there is no ledge. Now, when, it talk, when we talk about um, optics, right? So obviously we know there's no optic on here. So we know that the, the Bull Armory Cleaver C is gonna be the loser in this. But when we talk about optics and the capability, obviously you have the Zev slide, which you can see is optic capable for an RMMR. And then you have the MR920. Hands down, MR920 is a winner just because of the mounting system and how easy it is to mount this on your firearm. So I think overall, when I look at the MR920 and I, and I just kind of play around with this gun, I have to say that it, in my opinion, um, it's probably the best overall gun. Now, why do I say that? I say that very simply put because of the fact that you have a lot of options that come out of the box. Keep in mind though, this one is a little bit more expensive when I bought it back in the day, which should feel, I think it's probably like two years now, uh, is more, was more expensive than this one after I built it. And it absolutely eclipses it, uh, the Bull Armory in price. Again, this is the 399 MSRP on this. You know, the MR920 is about Geez, probably like three times more expensive when I bought it. So what I have to say is that while the MR920 is a superior gun in a lot of different ways, you know, the optic system, a lot of the features it comes with, uh, the capability of the gun, I have to say that the Zev kind of falls somewhere. I just don't know where. Now, the Zev is a good gun. Shoes really nice. I mean, you have the, the steel chassis in there. It is removable, so you can replace the lower if you choose to. But I have to say that for some reason... The MR920 always shoots really well. It is a very comfortable handgun. The trigger's decent, it's not the best, but still decent. And it is just a very functional firearm. So if I was gonna pick one of the three as my first choice, it's most certainly gonna be the MR920 just because of the options and everything it comes with. Now, the second choice I have between a pretty expensive gun, that's a Glock clone, fairly much, um, or a very cheap gun, that's pretty much a Glock clone. So if I had to choose between the two, which one would I pick? Now, some might say, well, you're getting so many more features with this. Um, you're getting the opportunity to switch out the chassis system and all that other great stuff. Um, I just think that the one thing I don't like about this is that the track record of this isn't that great. The OZ-9C is a good gun, but there have been people who have had complaints about it, that things have not worked on it. While the Bull Armory is kind of a young gun and it is new to the market, I do think this has a lot of promise as a firearm. I do believe if I was gonna choose a second one to kind of back up the MR920, I definitely would pick this one. And the reason being is you're looking at uh, you know maybe a $400 handgun, extremely functional, has great serrations, great ergonomics, the trigger is fantastic. I mean, does it do everything right? It doesn't. There are some things that I'd like to see changed on it, not that anybody's listening, but uh, I, I'm not a big fan of this texturing right here. I do wish they would have cut this out a little bit more. I'm a little, I'm not real fancy on the extended takedown lever. Like I just don't understand why you would need that per se, only because, I mean, how hard is it to pull your slide back, pull down the tabs and then push the slide forward to take it down? You know, I just think that maybe that's not necessary. Um, the look of the gun is, is pretty good. I mean, it's a nice looking firearm. And I think overall, when you kind of combine a lot of the things this has going for it and the price you can get it for, it's kind of a no brainer. You know, why would you spend, if you're building your own around, I don't know, eight fifty, maybe nine hundred dollars, or sometimes over a thousand, depending where you're getting it from. When you really could do some good stuff with this. Now the question is, what are what's compatible with it? That's a good question as well. Um, you know, obviously aftermarket sites, not a problem. They take Glock sites, they take Glock mags. Uh, the only other thing I can tell you about the magazines, and I'll kind of show you. Here's the uh, the Bull Armory. That's where it goes. Doesn't really go anywhere else. Now these come with Bull Armory mags. Um, they couldn't send them to me. Thank you to New York State and it's to just terrific 10 round rule. Um, but the mags don't drop clear, which interestingly enough, <clears throat> if I had one in front of me, which of course I don't because I put them all in my, slot, my uh, safe, the Glock 19X magazines work in there flawlessly. They drop right out, no issues, which is kind of weird because when you look at the 19 and the 19X, they're basically the same mags. I even looked to see if this was cut in a little deeper on the 19X. It does not appear to be, so I'm not exactly sure what's causing that. But I also have the same problem in this gun, only it's worse. So like, for example, there's the mag release. That's as far as it comes out, and then there's a lot of friction to bring it out. So again, am I certain as to what's causing that? I'm really not, but the 19X magazine fits in here and drops out with no problem. 
obviously with the MR920, perfect. So, you know, it's little weird things like that, that when you start comparing or comparing the three models, you start to realize that there are these little, little things here and there that might be turnoffs for you. And it's obvious why you certainly want to have a magazine that drops out quickly. I do wish I could get my hands on a bull armory magazine just to see if it works uh, a little bit smoother than this. They may have, uh, you know, made a thinner magazine. Maybe the cuts for the, the mag release are a little bit deeper. Not really sure, but Again, at the end of the day, when you look at all these guns, they're all good guns. Really, they are. Um, I've carried the MR920. I've shot this quite a bit. It's really just a good gun. I actually dropped a new barrel in there as a Fury Precision barrel. Um, so overall, this has been a solid gun, rock solid. And I'd have no problem replacing any Glock in the lineup with an MR920 or any of their models from Shadow System. The Zev... Um, you know, it's a decent gun. I just would never make this my carry. Um, I just wouldn't. I just don't have enough confidence. <coughs> Excuse me. I just don't have enough confidence in the function of the gun just yet. Uh, that may take some time. Also, it's a little bit heavier, obviously, than the other two, thanks to the metal chassis. But, uh, you know, it looks nice. It's a cool looking gun. Very functional. I really like the way the slide actuates and everything. The trigger is very good. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't have a holster for it. It doesn't fit into any of my Glock holsters. Um, and so that's kind of why I'm putting this as last. Again, the Bull Armory is going to be second place. Uh, it just has a lot of things going for it right now. Um, they have a, a, some really cool ones out there. They actually have one, and I'm trying to remember what it's called. I want to say it's, I think it's the, the Hatchet. It's either, I think it's the Hatchet. Uh, or maybe the, no, it is the Hatchet or Tomahawk. I think it's the Hatchet. But the hatchet is pretty cool because the texturing that you see right here is actually on the grips, uh, I believe, on the, the sides. And then this is the same, which would be pretty cool. That would be a good combination. And this is also no longer there. I think they textured it like this here. So that's kind of neat. Um, and I'd like to get my hands on one because it is optic capable. But I think overall, like I said, MR920, in my opinion, is the best of the best. Uh, very functional, great, great gun ergonomically. Trigger's decent, but just everything else comes with out of the boxes, in my opinion, makes it the clear winner. Obviously, it's a premium price. Um, however, dead last, unfortunately, is going to be the Zev. While it does have many good features to it, there are some things about it that I'm a little iffy on. Uh, Weight-wise, function-wise, track record-wise, it is pretty cool, and it shoots really nicely. But at the same time, I've got to say, the Bull Armory is number two. So at the end of the day, MR920, Bull Armory, uh, and of course the Zev, those are the three Glock type guns I still own. But leave some comments. Tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me which one you think would be the best. And if you've had experience with any of them or all of them, why do you choose that model versus any other Glock type clone out there? Again, I'd love to hear your comments. Leave them down below, at least read your comments. And, you know, give us a thumbs up because that's helpful, guys. Uh, I'm trying to produce a little more videos. It's been a long time, but I'm starting to get back in the swing of things. So I hope you have a great night. Stay safe. And as always, freedom is never free.